Hello, everybody. This is Captain Sweep of the Very Secret Plan and Planetary Guardians Media Network and Game. Uh, I have an, uh, a very, 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 very special guest today and the beginning of a new show called Quantum Consciousness, where me and the Reb are going to start to delve into the higher matters of spirit as well as the political situation on the planet. Now, the Rev has, is a transformational uh, coach, in a sense. He's a, it's more of, a, I guess, an arts facilitator, but he's, he's been perfecting how to assist people and uh, couples and groups, how to remove their blocks, get through the shadow, and to bring out their highest gifts for uh, probably 20 or 30 years at least. And uh, I met him probably about eight years ago. And so we have developed over time quite an interesting relationship uh, where there's a mutual respect and somewhat of an understanding of our different perspectives. And he knows more probably about the inflow matrix than most people. He has been inflow matrix to some degree. And he has his own uh, toolkit of uh, transformational tools. And so we're, we're going to begin to dive into uh, the Rev's perspective and to give him the floor to share what he has learned and what he is seeing on, in, in the world right now. And my, my first question to you, Rev, is just to give a, an overall assessment of the global political situation. Uh, what do you think is actually happening right now? And don't hold back any punches. The audience is ready for this. Well, great to, uh, to be uh, uh, on this platform with you, Captain Sweet. And uh, I, I wanted to begin, first of all, by thanking you for inviting me to have the opportunity to speak to a wider audience about uh, concerns that we all have. One of the things that I just I want to say right off the top is what we're doing right now is, uh, is in, indicative of what's going on all around the world. More and more people are taking to this medium uh, with the idea of direct interfacing with a wider audience and uh, cutting out the middleman, i.e. mainstream media, and the usual, uh, usual facilitators of communication uh, amongst ourselves. It, uh, communication is being uh, Evolved or not evolved, I can say the use of the word evolved, but it, it's, it's moving into the grassroots level. And, and, uh, and it's important that, it, that, it, uh, that this happens because uh, we, we are dealing with a matrix of deception, disinformation, uh, outright lies, and, uh, and programming that uh, is, is, has infected um, the the internet, the mainstream media, and traditional uh, sources where we get some idea of what actually is going on in our reality. So this is a very powerful example of the, actually the empowerment that's happening within more and more people around the world to directly contact and interface with audiences of, of like-minded people. So. Um, in terms of the big picture, we're going through what I would call an axial moment. This is a defining moment for the species. And um, we know that this particular aspect of it, the, uh, this pandemic that we're all going through, uh, is going to definitively affect um, how we interface with one another, how we understand what's going on in the wider world. And it's a, it is a defining moment in terms of how we, how we see ourselves in the midst of this imposed uh, uh, slowdown and, uh, and lockdown of the global community as we uh, come to terms with COVID-19. So um, how do you see that sort of fitting into the larger context of what we've been going through? Like, how has this built to get to this point, and who do you think is behind it? Well, this is, I think it's, uh, it's part of a, a long history of, um, uh, what's this, 
David Ike say, um, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the the crisis and then the response to the crisis, um, and, uh, and and then social engineering as we go along. Uh, this is very much a planned operation. The CB19 is part of a, a whole series of events that have taken us to where we are right now. What I see is an acceleration of this process. And uh, and as we go down this road, either we are being further colonized, our minds are being further colonized and, uh, and programmed, and we, uh, we are being taken further, further into the, the matrix, um, or we are awakening. We are uh, recognizing that the pattern, we're seeing the, uh, the, the, the spell, the dream spell that's being cast, and we are involved in uh, dispelling these, uh, these dark dystopian dreams that uh, are being spun. So you're, you're a third generation priest? That is, uh, and so your background is very uh, spiritual, and I was just wondering if you want to add where are you at with that in your life, and how do you see kind of religion in general these days, and how do you see, how does that reconnect to what's going on to the planet right now? Well, yeah, I just in terms of my own background, my uh, my grandfather uh, was. Uh, an Anglican missionary came out in 1910 from London, England, and uh, worked with the native people, the Cree people, north of Lake Superior and Rainy River and Sioux Lookout. My father um, worked uh, as an Anglican priest in the Diocese of Toronto for 40 plus years. And I um, I was ordained back in 1985, so, you know, uh, 35 years ago, um, and uh, have. Uh, uh, worked in different capacities within within the ethos of of the Anglican culture. Uh, my my relationship with the church, of course, has changed and evolved as uh, as I have uh, lived out my life. I'm at a place in in terms of uh, my relationship with the church where I I I see you know I because I grew up in it. I understand it very well. I see it. I see its light. I see it. I see the uh, the positive uh, uh, dimensions of it, and I also see the shadow side of it. And as particularly since nine one one was a was a that was a particularly galvanizing moment for the whole planet, and it was a, a marker that shifted us. Just like this COVID-19, it's another marker that shifts the planet down a particular road. And um, since that time, um, as I began to do my own personal research and uh, look at alternative media to try to get a, an understanding as to what really is going on, um, I, I became more and more disillusioned with, uh, with corporate religion and uh, the state of spirituality within the, the culture that I was uh, operating within. My critique of the, of the church is that it is, it's a corporation, and corporations by their very nature are self-interested. And uh, so the, the agenda of most corporate religious organization is self-perpetuation. Now, the problem with that is, if it's about survival, then it has, it's totally um, repudiating the purpose of why it exists, which is to be a transmitter and an educator of higher states of consciousness, specifically in the West, Christ consciousness. And this is, the, this is where, you know, organized religion, largely failed and where the people that are involved in mediating a message um, are, are uh, teaching at a, at a 
very rudimentary and superficial level. And because of that, they do not have the resources or the depth of awareness to address the crises that we're in and the agendas that we're having to uh, uh, to come to terms with. Um, and this is, of course, where we get into all things conspiratorial and where we begin to ask the question, well, really, what happened on 911? What, what really happened there? And uh, for me, right off the bat, um, we're, we're, in the, we're faced with uh, a kind of a, uh, a fork in the road. Those who, uh, those who go along with the official narrative and those who, who recognize that the official narrative is uh, it's, it's full of lies and it's, uh, it's uh, a deception. So <clears throat> when you take the, the road less traveled, that is the conspiratorial road, then you begin to get into um, the deeper dimensions of what's happening on top of those today. Start. Make pattern for approximately an hour to an hour and a half. And when I was told about this process and invited to do it, and uh, I thought about it, I said, well, that doesn't sound too difficult. I think I can handle that. With no idea of what I would encounter as a result of going through that process. I had a radical experience that totally uh, transformed my perception of the situation that I was going through with my my, my wife and uh, the solution to the problem. And it gave me a deep sense of spiritual connection to, uh, to God and, um, and a profound realization about the significance of the story from Genesis where God breathed into Adam. And um, the, the, the power of, in the Hebrew terminology, the power of ruach or the breath that we are, um, that we have available to us and, and how it can take us into a direct encounter with profound states of realization. So what would you say to people right now in terms of, uh, People that are at home, they're unsure of what is happening. Uh, they don't know what or who to believe. Uh, they know something's happening, uh, but there's so much controversy. And I think there's also, there, there's so much fear to actually express online what you truly think. I was with a group of people the other day, and both a naturopath and a psychotherapist had both been silenced by their associations, that they could not speak anything about what was going on and i think this is happening everywhere in terms of even if you're a professional and you're you have evidence and you have understanding that goes against the party line or the the government narrative you will pay a price you may get fired um, but you're being silenced so we're not hearing from a lot of the people that might be standing up uh, for fear of lo losing their job so i just wonder from your point of view you know what what should people be doing in terms of using this time? Well, I would say, um, first of all, realize that, <clears throat> that we have a choice. Each of us has a, have, has a choice. And to ask ourselves the question, what are the fundamental drivers that informs my state of being? And am I coming from fear? Is, is there this underlying anxiety that is moving me? Um, or, or am I moving from a higher state of self-awareness? Uh, am I moving from um, a desire for a deeper understanding as to what, what really is going on in the world? Now, if we choose the, the latter, then it means that we are going to um, come face to face with the drama that is going on in the planet right now. 
which is the desire to control, ultimately control and um, punish those people um, that have an alternative perspective as to what's going on in the world. And it has ever been done. You know, this is, it's, this is all part of, of uh, being on the planet, being, uh, being incarnated onto the planet. Um, there's a war going on. And this war has been going on for thousands of years. Um, so part of the reason why people don't want to wake up is because they know that on, an, on, a, on a deep unconscious level, on the level of the soul that to, to begin to, as they say, go down the rabbit hole and explore alternative perspectives as to what's going on means that they, it, puts, it puts them into a place of, of uh, potential um, uh, difficulty with the collective and with the, the agenda that's being rolled out. And, and so therefore we have to we have to make the make the choice as to whether or not we we stand in solidarity with our foundational truth or whether we submit to the coercion and the control of the collective agenda that is being imposed upon us by this shadowy group of controller. I mean, I, I've been sort of, as you know, on the front lines for a few years, and I've seen that there's a complacency in people. I've seen that there's a fear to join in. And it, it does seem a bit like lobsters in the boiling pot where the temperature slowly rises and the people or the lobsters don't realize that they're boiling to death. And then the other metaphor of if one lobster is trying to climb out, the other lobsters sort of pull them back in. And in, in my own world, there has been a great deal of frustration regarding, you know, watching this and seeing, you know, what's happening and seeing how deeply brainwashed people are and they're not willing to admit it. And again, you know, at least in Canada, a lot of people have a very good life. They've got their car, they got their food, they got their house, they, they, they've got their, their life. And, why would anyone really want to put that in jeopardy? And yet now, you know, there's problems with the food, food supply. You know, big cities have three days of food and here they are, they're about to put travel restrictions in. And you're seeing, you know, even in California, there's people come, cops coming into people's homes, checking to see if they're immune. You know, I'm just seeing signs all across, you know, Facebook and YouTube land. You know, David Icke speaking about the relationship between 5G and uh, COVID, and then all of a sudden, 7 million people are watching, and then all of a sudden, he's, he's banned. He's taken out. And so the big players are being, if they have any type of audience, they're being shut down. And there, there's a great deal of censorship within Facebook and YouTube. So to me, there, there's like a window right now, which may close, and these nefarious plans may come into being, and generally they do, right? Like generally, they get away with it. They got away with 9-11. They got away with nearly every false flag that has occurred. It, it, it appears that they got away with it. Mm. But the reality is, if you, <clears throat> if you did a poll of Americans and asked them whether they believe in the official story, or whether they think that their government was involved in the taking down of the towers, I think you'd find that at least 50% of the American public, and certainly if you polled uh, New Yorkers, you would find that there probably be between 70% of New Yorkers that said it was an inside job. So even though it looks like they succeeded, they're keeping a lid on things by the skin of their teeth. As a matter of fact, the um, the ones that are behind these um, these false flags are more and more what I feel is uh, are coming from a place of desperation because there is a rising awareness within the general population as to what really is going on. There is an awakening that's happening. I'm very excited about it, and and whatever whatever you know. Uh, nefarious and dark uh, 
plan that they come up with, what 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 is ironic is that within the very context of the plan, there is a kind of a, a an antidote that arises. This whole thing of locking people down and uh, imposing, you know, uh, this kind of I don't know. Uh, we're all on holiday right now, and we're getting paid to be on holiday. It's giving us an opportunity to actually get in touch with each other and get in, and 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 you know get in touch with our kids in a in a radically new kind of way and our spouses. So there's a kind of a silver lining in it as well, right? And I, where I'm coming from, you know, as as someone that is is a, is a kind of a, a professional religious is there is there are the forces of darkness that are endeavoring to uh, push the agenda of the one world order and global governance and the uh, the concentration of power in, in fewer and fewer hands and the dependence of the masses on these very small this very small group of people there's another reality, and that is that there is, this is all going on within the context of the cosmos and of a whole field of consciousness and a whole field of intelligence that is also engaged in this drama that's going on in this third dimensional reality, and which is just one dimension of many, many dimensions. We have the angelic, and the uh, and the heavenly realm, um, as well as the extraterrestrial and interdimensional realm, that that are involved in this drama that's going on right now. And so, when when the Master Yeshua says, "Do not be afraid, because I have overcome the world," I take that very seriously. That there is that that our the primary Force that we are all battling is the force of fear and uh, and disempowerment, and we're being called to stand in solidarity with ourselves and with our our, our, our fellow brothers and sisters on the planet in a radically new way and declare who and what we are. That's number one. And as we do that, we will see a lifting of the shadows. We will see the, the, the light begin to break through the clouds. And um, a, a growing understanding of the moment that we're in. And, I, and it is a battle. There's no doubt about it. it. As I said, we're in a war right now. And it seems very dark. And we can be swallowed up by what appears to be the blackness of the situation. But remember that there is a power that we have available to us which transcends that darkness and always defeats it simply by bringing in the light. Well, those are very wise and strong words, uh, Rev. And, uh... Hope. Words of hope. <laughs> Is that, I, and, go on. Yeah. And, and with that awareness, uh, we're able to not lose um, our ground. We're not we're not pushed off our center. We're able to stand and lean into this um, the crisis of the moment without being um, uh, overthrown. So I see this as a weekly show what, that we're going to start to examine, you know, on a weekly basis, what is happening in the world right now and uh, what we can do about it. And I want to thank you, Rev, for uh, starting this with me again and for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. And I think there's a large audience of people out there that uh, could use some insight from the Rev, maybe a bit from the sweep. And uh, if there's one last thing you'd like to say to everybody, uh, what is it? Don't lose hope and know who you are. 
and connect to who you are, the depth of who you are. And uh, in the words of uh, a great mystic um, that uh, lived through the calamity of the Hundred Years' War and, and bubonic plague in uh, Northern Europe, all is well, and all manner of things are well, and all shall be well. All right. Thank you for listening.